Hey guys, Whitney here. Welcome to the Passive Investing Made Simple show. I am your host, Whitney Elkins Hutton, and we do this show live every Tuesday to help you learn the ins and outs of passive investing. And so if you haven't done so already, make sure you join us at PassiveInvestingWithWhitney.com. And there you're going to get access to future masterclass sessions. You're also going to get access to our free uh, ebook content and checklist to help you assess your passive deals and your strategy. And you also get to see our open deals there. So be sure to check out PassiveInvestingWithWhitney.com. Now for today's topic, uh, we are going to talk about how to invest. Do you, all, you know, there's a myriad of different ways you can invest in a passive deal. You can do it with cash or you can do it through a self-directed IRA account. Um, and you know, even when we talk about cash, we're going to talk about different entity structures, but really the centering question that we have here today is how do you decide? And so I'm going to help walk you guys through a framework so you can decide the best course of action for you. And we'll talk about some of the advantages, disadvantages of investing either way. Now, as I always say, this is not financial, legal, or tax advice. So make sure to take this information back to your team. Now, if we haven't met already, again, my name is Whitney. I'm the Director of Investor Education here. And really, my real estate journey starts off back in 2002. Uh, I was fix and flipping and house hacking. And, uh, you know, got really good at building up buckets of equity, really bad at creating cash flow for myself. And then fast forward a few years, a friend of mine said, hey, why don't you keep some of those flips and put a renter in them? And that's when it really dawned on me, this is how you create passive cash flow, as well as building up buckets of equity. And oh, yeah, since I'm no longer flipping, I get tax benefits as well. And so really, it's all been in my you know, past 10 years of my journey. I've been about doubling down on this uh, like buy and hold type strategy. And I utilize it through multifamily, self-storage, express car washes. And really that brings us to where we are at today. My husband and I, um, we have personally invested in over 6,500 multifamily deals, 2,200 self-storage deals, and 15 express car washes. But it's not about numbers. It's about what you get, which is 100% control and choice on how you spend your time. Now, guys, I know I've been right here with you for the past 12 to 24 months during this interest rate hike. I know this has been an extremely challenging time for cash flow on a lot of these deals, but it's still possible to put yourself in a cash flowing position. That way, when the market starts going on the upswing on some of these assets, your cash flow starts growing. And it doesn't always have to be about equity deals too. It can be about how can you complement your portfolio with leveraged debt or investing in debt, not leveraged debt, they're very different, but investing in debt. How do you leverage that for cash flow in your portfolio? And this is something we can help you do at PassiveInvesting.com. We have, um, you made over 270 million loans in our rehab wallet um, side of our business, our lending side of our business. Again, a great place to create stabilized cash flow right now in today's market and get amazing returns. And we've been able to create um, hefty returns for our limited partner investors on the equity side of deal, uh, equity side of things too. Okay. Now, again, we're going to talk about different ways, the advantages, pros and cons of investing with cash versus self-directed IRA, give you a framework on how do you decide what's best for you in your portfolio. But again, what we talk about here on the show, it's not financial advice, legal advice, tax advice, really it's to arm you with possibilities so you can take these possibilities back to your team and make a good decision for yourself. Now let's dive into today's content. You know, really there's four different ways that we can fund a deal. Okay, so, um, and, and we put them in two camps, cash and then retirement plan investing, okay? Now, when we have our cash investing, we can invest as an individual, we can invest jointly with our spouse, we can go through some type of entity, like a trust or a business, you know, um, you know, an LLC, you know, revocable trust or irrevocable trust, okay? Um, even you can invest as an entity in your retirement account, okay? But that leads us over into the second way to invest, which is retirement plans. And that's going to really, you know, overarching cover your self-directed IRAs, as well as your qualified retirement plans, like your solo 401ks. Okay, so there's a myriad of options here. So 
really, you know, 30,000 foot view, why do we need to understand our various options for ourselves, And what kind of is going to be our framework to decide what's best for you? Well, you have to understand how you're going to use the cash flow and the equity. Okay. That right there is going to be the driving force on whether you invest in some sort of cash uh, structure, be it joint uh, individual or using an LLC or a trust. Um, how are you going to use the benefits, the tax benefits on this? Like, what is that impact? Do you need it to flow through to your 1040? Okay. All right. Or like, do you need some sort of asset transfer protection or, uh, excuse me, do you, how, do you have it outlined on how you're going to transfer the assets as you hold them and how are you going to protect them? Okay. Now the first, I kind of ordered these in the way that I, I personally think about it, but for you, you might have a different ordering. Maybe tax benefits is super important to you. Maybe you have your own business or you're a, a, a doctor, engineer, you have, or you're a solopreneur and you need to offset income quickly. Okay. Maybe tax benefits are more important to you. Right. But these are kind of the four different buckets you want to think through, because as we talk through our different strategies between investing with cash, all the different ways we can invest our cash and all the different ways we can invest through our IRA accounts. These are the four things that are going to kind of pop up over and over again. So let's talk about these two different buckets. OK, and then really kind of help you lead you through a process to figure out what would be good for you. Okay, if you invest as an individual or with your spouse utilizing cash, these are generally going to be pretty quick. Okay, maybe one or two people signing on the deals. All the distributions will go back to your personal account. Okay, either in your name as an individual or a joint account um, with your spouse. All the tax benefits will flow directly to your 1040. Okay, and as far as like how the assets will transfer, should something happen to you, it's going to be dictated by whatever you have in your will, your trust, or if you don't have a will or a trust, it's going to be dictated by state law. Okay. Now, again, from an asset protection strategy, okay, this, this is where you really have to understand, do you have a will or a trust in place? Okay. Make sure I would always suggest people have that in place. For me, I would personally love trust because if you title things to a trust, you, the owner is the trust. The owner never dies. Okay. The trust never dies unless you, you close it for whatever reason. Um, there's no top down protection, whether you invest as a, you know, cash with, as an individual spouse or in a trust. And what do I mean by that? Meaning, um, if you went out and, you know, got into a car rack that was, and you were at fault for whatever for reason, um, those assets, Okay, well, you're protected from slips, trips, and falls and nefarious things happening, you know, on the property, okay, by the, that's all contained by the LLC, the limited partner LLC. The top down is largely left unprotected. You know, if you were at fault for slander, libel, got in a car wreck, those could be, those assets could be attacked from the top down. Okay, so this is where I really, you know, encourage people to partner with their legal team, um, you know, maybe consider investing in through an LLC, which we'll talk about next, or at the very least have some sort of personal umbrella policy in place. That way, um, that is what, you know, uh, who, whoever is coming after your assets looks at, not necessarily your assets. Also talk, think through like um, when you're investing, how do you, if something happened to you to, tonight or tomorrow, like how do you want those assets to transfer? Okay. If you have communal laws in your state or you invested with your spouse and something happens to you, they would go right to your spouse. Okay. Kind of easy peasy. Um, but if you don't, like, do you have again, like that will or trust in place that would you know, handle the asset transfer? Here's another question, you know, if you choose to invest as with your spouse or in a communal state, um, do you have some sort of plan un in the unfortunate case of divorce? Okay. Do you have you thought through that aspect as well? Okay. These are all kind of the not so fun questions that your, your lawyer will ask you, but you know, are rarely brought up on some of these webinars. Okay. Now cash. Another way to invest your cash is through an entity like an LLC or a trust, 
Okay. And again, this is usually pretty quick. You're going to have one or two signers probably. Again, the distributions are going to go back to your account, but it's going to, this time it's going to be a business account or an account attached to that entity, like a trust. The tax benefits will flow directly to the entity. Now, if that entity is what we call a disregarded entity, that will then flow to your 1040. Okay, this is where you have to partner with a lawyer to make sure that you're setting your entities up as you need them in order to take advantage of the asset protection and asset transfer uh, structure that they provide, but also to make sure that you're not complicating your tax situation at the same time. Um, and then when we talk about asset transfer strategy, um, this is going to be determined by your entity structure and, you know, and or your operating agreement. So if you have invested through an LLC, the operating agreement is going to, you know, dictate who the next owner is. If you invested in a trust, then the trust documents are going to, um, are going to be the owner, you know, should your, the assets have to transfer. Now, from a protection standpoint, okay, there's a couple of different things to take into account here. Um, and then some of these have updated and changed with the recent implementation of the Corporate Transparency Act. So we did a webinar at the beginning of April walking you through the ins and outs of the Corporate Transparency Act and how to comply if you have invested through an entity that needs to, to meet these standards. But basic thing, if you're investing through an LLC, you need to treat it as if it's a business, meaning you need to have a formed LLC with a federal EIN number with an operating agreement and a bank account, okay? So don't invest through an LLC and not have the funds go back to your entity bank account and, and you know, maybe you know, have your distributions go back to your personal bank account. You will have blown apart your corporate structure, your corporate veil, and make yourself um, open to liability, okay? If you've invested through a trust, you don't need an LLC or an operating agreement but you want to still make sure you're taking care and have the proper accounting in place, all right? Now, regardless if you invest through an LLC or a trust structure, you want to make sure that you're compliant with what the Corporate Transparency Act. And again, I encourage you to go back on our YouTube page and find that webinar with our legal counsel uh, to help you understand um, just what goes in, what the timetable is like and what goes into complying with the Corporate Transparency Act. But we've got some time to get that done right now. Now, from an asset transfer perspective, again, this is going to be according to your trust documents or your LLC documents or your, I'm sorry, your operating agreement, okay? So you want to make sure all those documents are kept current. I would review them at minimum one time a year to make sure there have been no material changes. Now, remember, if you have a material change in your business or in your trust, you're going to want to make that you're updating that um, with the uh, FinCEN, uh, which is, you know, so you remain compliant with the Corporate Transparency Act. Okay. All right. So we've kind of talked about the advantages, disadvantages of investing in cash. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of investing through an SDIRA. Okay, and then we'll kind of compare and contrast and give you guys a framework so you can kind of figure out what works best for you. So when you invest through an SDRA or self-directed retirement account, um, you're going to have your fees and rules. Those are going to be dictated by the custodian. Okay, they're going to be following federal law for that. Okay, your custodian may actually have to sign your documents. Okay, so it's not just one or two quick signatures by you. All that documentation, the PPM operating agreement, all that, that's going to have to be signed by the, the custodian, unless you have a checkbook LLC, right? Your distributions, those distributions must go back to your retirement account. Again, if you choose not to do that, okay, that's on the uh, subscriber, you, to make sure that the accounting is correct, okay? That's not something that we, as the operator, will double check for you. But you want to make sure your distributions are going back to the NTT account, okay? The cash flow as well as the equity. Um, otherwise, you're blowing apart your retirement account, okay? And not just the that deal. You're blowing apart your entire, potentially, your entire retirement account, okay? Now, tax benefits. This is a misnomer. A lot of people think that if you invest through a self-directed IRA, you don't get to take advantage of the tax benefits of a passive investment, 
in, especially on the equity side. And that's simply not true. It's just that the tax benefits are confined to that, that entity, which in this case is a retirement account. So they stay suspended there. They don't flow through your retirement account to your 1040 to where you can utilize them or bank them for future losses. They remain in that retirement account. So make sure you're keeping track of those losses um, as your K-1 statements come in. Now, depending on what, what type of account that you're investing through, um, type of self-directed IRA account that you're investing through, you may be subject to UDFI or UBIT tax. So UDFI, unrelated debt financing income, will trigger unrelated business income tax. Okay. Now there's only one IRA structure that I know of right now that will sidestep UBIT, and that is investing through a solo 401k or otherwise known as a solo K. Now, asset protection and asset transfer. Okay. Work with your custodian to ensure that your rules are being followed. Okay. That's going to help protect those assets and those accounts. Ensure that you're maintaining proper account accounting of everything, okay, that all distributions are going back to that account, all expenses are being paid out of that account, and that you have the proper beneficiaries labeled on that account as well. Okay, now I know a couple questions are coming through. Go ahead and drop those in the Q&A box. I will make sure to address any questions in the chat um, in a Q and a box as we go through the, the presentation, we did have one comment come in, be mindful of custodian maintenance expenses. Absolutely. I think we did touch on that, but that account, that self-directed IRA account has to pay for, you know, all the income has to come back to it, but all the expenses that if you have any expenses to pay, they have to come out of that account. Okay. We want to make sure we have, it's like, a business account. You want to make sure it's all being contained in that account. Okay. Now, how do we decide here, which is the better course of investing? Well, here, it really generally makes no difference to the operator. You know, how you as a limited partner invest. Most operators, I know us, we will work with people that have a self-directed self IRA account. Now, we need to be mindful that it generally the timeline to invest through a self-directed IRA um, generally takes longer. So if you're thinking that you want to invest through a self-directed IRA, I suggest you get your account set up earlier, like now, and then you can always like fund it later. Okay. You might have to put a minimum in there in order to get the account open. Um, but then you can always fully fund it, transfer. If you have a, a self-directed brokerage account, you can always transfer funds over to there. And, and it has to be like, uh, I, I apologize, I'll rephrase that. It needs to be, a, uh, a say, a traditional or a Roth IRA account at a brokerage, uh, say like Vanguard or Schwab, then you can roll that over, okay? So you can't do direct transfer, but you could do a roll over. Okay. And if you have any questions on that, we can connect you with an IRA provider to help you answer some of those questions. But this is how we decide. Okay. Again, first of all, how do you want to use the cash flow? Do you need it now? Do you need it later? If you need the cash flow now, think about investing with cash. So that cash flow comes, and I mean cash, not just cash flow, but also the equity growth. If you need that access to it now, if you can't wait until you retire, then invest with cash, okay? And one of those cash, structure, cash structures, like an individual spouse or through an LLC. If you're okay having it later after you retire, then think about putting that in your self-directed IRA account. Same thing. Do you need access to those tax benefits now? Or are you okay with, the, with those tax benefits being locked up in the IRA account? Okay, that again will help you choose. Asset protection, okay? This usually isn't necessarily a driving factor for most people, but it's something that you need to think through, okay? Do you, um, you know, if you're investing with cash and you just want to put it in your own or your your name or your jointly with your spouse, okay, there might be some limited liability there. You're going to want to make sure that you have good, you know, umbrella insurance to help protect you. If you're investing through an LLC, you know, do you have all the proper business entity structure and maintenance, corporate maintenance in place to help protect you? Okay, again, with the self-directed IRA, asset protection generally comes along pretty naturally here. 
And it, but it is limited by the IRA or the qualified retirement uh, plan. And sometimes state laws do come into effect. So you want to be mindful of what those state law caps are. Now, asset transfer, okay, for a self-directed IRA, pretty, pretty streamlined here. It's going to be based on um, who you designate as your beneficiary for your retirement accounts. When you're investing in cash, okay, it's going to be dictated by either your will, trust, or the laws of the state, or based on um, your documents for that entity. So this, you guys can take a little screenshot of this. This will be a kind of a great flow chart for you to work back and forth as you're trying to figure out which bucket of funds do I fund my deal with. And if you're interested in understanding more ins and outs like this on how to build and protect generational wealth, you can check out my book on bigger pockets, money for tomorrow, because we do walk through a little, a little bit more context on how you make these decisions. And again, this is my invitation to you. You know, join us for future master classes at passiveinvestingwithwhitney.com. When you join there, not only do you get access to the future master classes, you get access to our boot skills building boot camps as well. You get access to our uh, a one on one call with me. We can discuss your passive investing goals, and then you get access to our priority deals. All right, guys, we're about to start our Ask Me Anything session. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Awesome. Easy peasy, pretty quick topic here to cover. What questions do you guys have? J jump on over to the Q&A box. I'd love to know. Was this helpful? First of all, I want to understand if this is helpful. Or if you're just like, Winnie, this has been covered too many times, please don't do it again. <laughs> so, um, but I, you know, for me, it was um, when I'm talking to investors, the reason why I wanted to bring this topic up is so many people are trying to figure out, okay, like if I have two buckets of funds available to me, how do I make the best decision on which one to use? And a lot of times we're trying to do so much about tax optimization and that's really not what we should be focused on. We should be focused on some of these other things as well. Um, how do you in, uh, invest for... with 401 fund be available to you to invest in a private real estate deal or in real estate at all. Okay. Those type of funds you need to figure out how to unlock from the 401k. Now, how do you do that? Well, it usually means that you have to separate employment from your employer. Okay. Meaning that you either leave your job or you get fired. We don't want you to get fired. Okay. Now, if you have a better place to go to, we, we did a webinar on like how to make that job move back in March. You know, I encourage you to look through that um, that webinar because there might be some good cases to where you want to move, especially if you got five hundred or a million dollars sitting in your retirement account, and you want to uh, kind of unlock that and get it in, under your control through a self directed environment. It it may be worthwhile to you to take a pay, uh, just switch jobs and take a pay raise at a different company to get those funds unlocked. But once you separate employment, you now are eligible to either roll over your 401k to your next employer, which um, my humble opinion is not what we should be doing. Okay, again, opinion, not direction, opinion. Two, um, you can now move this into a self-directed environment. Now for most people, they're just gonna put that like park it in like a Roth or a traditional account at uh, say Vanguard, Schwab or Fidelity. But if it, if you now have like a business, maybe like you're an engineer or a doctor, or like you're in real estate full-time, or you're planning on being in real estate full-time, or you got some sort of side hustle, you might want to talk to self-directed IRA custodian about setting up what we call a solo for one solo for a one K. And this will allow to take you, allow you to take your traditional, um, the monies that you've invested on the traditional side of your company, previous companies, 401k, and move them into what we call a solo K environment. Again, just another type of 401k, but now you control it, not your employer. Okay. And when you do that, now you have this, these funds in a solo 401k account or in a Roth or a traditional IRA outside of your employer's control, 
the world is now more open to you to invest in alternative investments like real estate, like businesses like Express Car Washes, like real estate debt notes, okay? I mean, you, you can do a lot of different things, okay? Those are just some things to, you know, a few things to name here. You can do self-storage. You can do all of that, okay? Now, there are some pros, and, there are some things you can't invest in. You can't invest in wine or stamps or cars or art, okay? We can't get a tangible benefit. You can't invest in gold and store it at your house, okay? Those are those are kind of off limit things. So there are some rules you have to follow here. But that way, when you, once you get into one of these type of environments, either a Roth, self-directed Roth, a self-directed um, traditional uh, IRA account or a solo 401k, even a, a, a SEP or a simple, okay? Those are two other types of accounts. Now you're open to investing in other alternative assets, okay? Now, if you have your money parked at Vanguard, Schwab, or Fidelity, they will have only their narrow bucket of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds that you can invest in, okay? In order to invest in real estate, you're going to have to take part of those funds or all, depending, and move them into, uh, you know, with one of our, you know, not our partners, but a self-directed IRA custodian, okay? Somebody who is versed in helping you invest in real estate. So that's kind of how you do it. And then once you get it rolled over to there, then it's time to, you know, you know, go shopping for a deal, you know, find a deal that will fit there, um, fit into that account. So hopefully that was a, a, a good enough explanation. If I need to expand on that, please let me know. All right. What other questions do you guys have? When you move funds from a 401k to a solo 401k, do you have to pay taxes? Uh, no, you shouldn't. You And even if you went from a four, your employer's 401k, or even an, if you have an old 401k hanging out somewhere, okay? Maybe you two jobs ago and you never moved it. Like you, you're gonna roll things over into a structure. So you should never pay taxes. What you do not want to do is liquidate your 401k. Okay, because that will trigger trigger taxes and could trigger penalties for you as well. So essentially, you're going to partner with the custodian and they're going to help you fill out some documents in order to roll things over from one structure to another. Now, if you're one of these people that went, uh oh, oops, I did liquidate it. Oh, my gosh. How do I get it back in there? I, I we goofed. Um, the IRS does give you in most cases, I think it's like a hundred days in, or 30 to hundred days to get it back in. So if you do liquidate it, you want to make sure, and you want it back in, you gotta, you gotta do it fast. You can't hang out and wait on this. Um, but long story short, you know, um, talk to the custodian about doing what we, you know, call is a rollover. Pretty, pretty simple. Shouldn't trigger any taxes. Okay. And that's if you're rolling like to like a 401k to a traditional, you know, and maybe your 401k has a traditional component and maybe it has a Roth component, both. Maybe you've been contributing to both sides, pre-tax and post-tax money. Okay. Then those would roll out to a traditional and Roth on their own. Okay. Now, if you take a 401k account that's all traditional and you tell your custodian, I want to open up a Roth IRA that's post-tax you will get a tax bill, okay? But they are gonna walk you through, are you sure you wanna do this? And they're gonna create a tax estimate for you. So it's, you should never get surprised by that, okay? So make sure you work with a qualified professional in that. Um, do you recommend working with a tax attorney or CPA um, and or CPA or find an attorney that specializes in real estate investing and a CPA that works with real estate investors? Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to kind of break that question down into parts. Yes, you should. Uh, I think you should always work with an accountant. And, you know, I think your financial team, okay, should include, okay, your wealth building team should include a great accountant and a great legal advisor. Okay. 
And if you're investing, and that's if you, even if you're investing in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, I would have them on call. You, nobody should be doing their own taxes. Okay. Very few people should be doing their own taxes. Normally working with a, C, uh, a CPA or an accountant, they're going to, you know, they're going to pay for themselves. <laughs> and especially at this level with doing private investing, they are going to more than pay the, uh, for themselves by helping you save on taxes. Okay. So yes, have those two team members. Um, now, as you scale up into real estate investing in passive investing into passive real estate, like, you know, investing in other people's deals. Yeah, it might be worthwhile to work with a what we call a tax strategist. Now, I did a webinar with Tom Wheelwright from WealthAbility, um, you know, back in middle of March. And, you know, he helped us kind of break down the difference between a, an enrolled agent, a CPA and an accountant uh, and, and like who might be the best fit for your portfolio. Um, but your tax strategist doesn't actually have to be the person filing your taxes. Those are going to be two different people. Okay. So order of operations, get a good accountant. Okay. Especially if you're investing in real estate, somebody who must know how to use depreciation and book it accordingly. Those investors goof up when they try to hire, keep their lifelong friend who is scared of real estate and scared of depreciation on, on their tax team. Okay. That's where they lose a lot of money. So get a good CPA that works with real estate investors, get a good lawyer who, especially if you're investing in private deals, knows how to read a private placement memorandum, meaning they're probably going to have some sort of background in securities law. Okay. They don't have to be necessarily a securities attorney, but has a background in securities law. Um, Okay, those are two, two must for the team. Okay. And then as you are scaling your real estate portfolio, um, actively or passively look to get that tax strategist on your team as well. Um, as far as what expertise should we look for in these professions? I'm going to, um, I have a webinar that I did two years ago back in June of 2022. And we interviewed Amanda Hahn, um, uh, well, and also like you can go back and look at our YouTube. Um, I've interviewed Amanda Hahn uh, from Keystone CPA. I've interviewed Brandon Hall from Hall CPA. Um, uh, I've interviewed Tom Wheelwright. Those are, you know, some great, you know, people to look at, you know, get an understanding on how to interview um, CPAs. Um, my lawyer, I've interviewed him. Uh, as well as his partner um, from KKOS Lawyers. Um, we just spoke with Mark Fetzer back in January. So those are some great resources for you. Let's see. If you invest money from a solo 401k to real estate investments, then distri distributions come to your 401k account or to your personal account. Okay. If you use any IRA money, solo K, and I should say IRA or qualified retirement plans, because technically a solo K is a qualified retirement account plan and not an IRA. But I want to make sure that we're covering all of our bases here. Any sort of qualified retirement plan or, um, you know, retirement account, um, the distributions must go back to that account. Okay. If you send them to your personal account, you are blowing, could potentially blow apart your entire retirement, like all of it. So maybe you put invested in one deal, like for a hundred thousand dollars and you got a million other dollars sitting in the other part of the, you know, other, um, the stock market, you could potentially blow apart your entire retirement account. Okay. Which means guess what? The IRS says, here's a bill for taxes and, um, fees now and penalties now, do now, not tomorrow now, right? Okay, so we wanna take care um, that whatever, however you invest, that that money's coming back to a checking account titled essentially to that investment. So if I invest under my name, I don't want it going to my husband's account and it should come back to an account that has my name on it, okay? If I invest jointly with my, my husband, it should come back to an account where we're both on it, not just my name or his name, but where we're both on it. This is how we keep our bookkeeping clean. Um, if we invest through uh, an LLC, it shouldn't come back to a personal bank account and must go back to a bank account to that LLC, 
Okay. Otherwise we blow apart our corporate veil structure for our LLC. If we invest through a retirement account, that money has to go back to the retirement account. Otherwise the IRS says, guess what? You violated everything according to your retirement account. We get to tax all of this now. Okay. So you don't want that to happen. So again, that goes back to our structure is how do you need the cash flow? How do you need to use the equity? Okay. Where do you need it to go? Because if you really need that cash flow, we need to get the cash in your hands and you invest that way. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question there. All right. What other questions do you guys have? Awesome. Was this helpful? Did we kind of cover everything for you? Do you guys feel armed with the information to go out and make this decision for yourself? Wyatt group today. All right. Well, if you guys have additional questions, feel free to reach out to me at Whitney at PassiveInvesting.com. I'll hang on here for another minute for to clean up any last minute questions. Otherwise, uh, we look forward to seeing you next week where we talk about investment fraud. We don't want that. Okay. How can you avoid investment fraud? All right, guys, take care. As always, we will see you soon.